I go and call Ms. Hiatsin. This is a sentence. Actually using the sentence in talking to someone constitutes a speech act. A speech act always involves a speaker and an addressee. A sentence contains information about an event. The speech act relates this information to the speaker and the addressee. So, for example, if I say to you, Hiatsin, I, Sin, I'm the speaker and I'm simply relating a fact to my addressee, you. The type of speech act I am performing is a statement. On the other hand, if I say, Hiatsin, did I go? I'm not simply relating a fact, I'm relating my desire at this time that you give me the information about an event. The speech act I'm performing is a question. The yes, no question maker, U, is a speech act article. It specifies something about the information in the sentence that relates to the speaker and the addressee. Calm has a number of speech act particles. These little words have several things in common. They all come somewhere after the first word of the sentence and before any other verb or act or need in regard to the basic event expressed in the sentence. You have already seen quite a few of these speech act particles. Here's a list of speech act particles that have been introduced so far. You should take some time now to go back and review each of these. Pay special attention to where they occur in the sentence and how they relate to the speech act. So we've got ya, and that was in the past and future tense video. Sa for future, chi, command, qui, suggests. U for yes or no, uch is requesting information. I a limited request. Quacha, therefore, and k hypothetical. We can also include sin I for san used, we and hi, you pluralizer in this list. Since they always occur in the position following the first word of the sentence. They also directly relate to the speaker and address in the speech act. Okay, I'm gonna have to read it. Kwaniich zan stracha. Kwaniich zan stracha. Kwaniich zan stracha. Kwaniich zan stracha. And Kwaniich zan stracha. The English translation of this set of call and speech act particles are primar primarily adverbs. The particle ch is always used when the speaker wants to let the addressee know that the speaker knows about the event only through hearing about it. It is used often in stories that are legends or fairy tales handed down through the generations. This can be translated with English apparently, evidently, or they say. The eek particle is used when the speaker believes that the event isn't true and wants the addressee to know that he or she desires the event to be true. This is almost always translated with English, I wish. The eek particle is also pronounced yuck, especially in the older recordings of Qualum. Also, some speakers sometimes pronounce it eek. The ich particle is used when the speaker wants the addressee to know that he or she is speculating or guessing that the event is true. It can be translated with I guess or must have. For example, the third model can be also translated my friend must have run. The ich particle is also pronounced yah, especially in the older recording of column. The uch a particle is used when the speaker wants to give an estimate based on his or her best knowledge. The speaker uses this one to indicate that he or she is pretty sure that the statement is true. It best translates into English as must be or must have been. Here's an example sentence. Moose uja squatchy. It must have been four days. This sentence was used to describe how long the swelling lasted after an injury. Note that in English, must can also mean have to or be obliged to or be required to. The uja particle never indicates that kind of obligation or requirement. The k particle, also pronounced k, uh, is used when the speaker wants to address you to know that he or she is impressed and surprised that the event happened. This particle adds a lot of emphasis to the statement. There are a lot of ways to translate this in English, such as really, indeed, or man. 
من چه دعوت اصلانی بسیام شد چقدر تا آینز ستاروش جسناز Now on to the thought, wonder, probably, and expected particles. Note that although some of the English translation of these Pijak particles have I, there is no Kalalam word in this sentence that directly refers to I. Let's listen to the model sentences. Oh, there isn't any. I'll read it. Kwaning it ta tsan shacha. I thought my friend ran. Kwaning it wo tsan shacha. I wonder if my friend ran. Kwaning it ta tsan shacha. My friend probably ran. And Kwaning it uch ta tsan shacha. As expected, my friend ran. The top particle is used when the speaker believes that the event is not true and wants the addressee to know that he or she previously been under the impression that it was true. This is always translated with I thought or I thought that. This particle can be pronounced T or T. The Wu particle is used when the speaker doesn't know if the event is true and wants the addressee to know that he is wondering if it is or will be true. This is translated with I wonder and sometimes with maybe. The chta particle is used when the speaker wants the addressee to know that the event may not have happened, but that the speaker is pretty sure it did. The best English translation for this is probably. The chta particle is used when the speaker wants the addressee to know that the event is predictable or expected. It can be translated as in the model with of course or predictably. And on to speculate, usual, why not, and independent particles. I'll read the model sentences to you. Kwaning it cha kui tsan shacha. My friend ran as usual. Kwaning it ach tai tsan shacha. I think my friend ran, but I'm not sure. Kwaning it ha kutsan shacha. Why doesn't my friend run? And Kwaning it kui chitsan shacha. My friend ran without telling anyone. I'll read the model sentences to you. Kwaning it cha kui tsan shacha. My friend ran as usual. Kwaning it ach tai tsan shacha. I think my friend ran, but I'm not sure. Kwaning it ha kutsan shacha. Why doesn't my friend run? And Kwaning it kweet chi tsan shacha. My friend ran without telling anyone. These four particles are not as frequently used as the other speech act particles. The chagui particle is used by the speaker to indicate that the situation is routine, a regular and expected occurrence. It happened or something happened and has happened before. It gives some of the idea of the English phrase, there he goes again. With ach tai, the speaker is expressing curiosity, similarly to the way I wonder or I'm not sure when used in English. The way Adeline Smith described it is that when you use this particle, it's like you're questioning yourself. The speech act particle in the third model, Huck, is used by the speaker to express a wonder that the situation is not different from the way it is. For example, hiya is he goes and hiya huck is why doesn't he or she go? Or I wonder why he or she didn't go. The English translation can be in the form of a question, but it's only a rhetorical question, not a real request for information. The final speech act particle in this group is Kwichi. This is the one that is the least commonly used. It adds the information that the situation occurred and that the speaker had knowledge of it only after the fact and no control over it. The situation was independent of the speaker. And that's it for our first video on speech act particles. Bye.